Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sandra Leopkant. I'm actually from Toronto, Canada. I'm an information security and privacy architect. Um, I've worked in Canada, US, Latin America, the Caribbean, and uh, in Europe as well. So hopefully I'm not going to repeat anything. Do we have a clicker? Hopefully I won't repeat too many things that you've already heard about. But I wanted to talk about um, Internet of Things and information security and security awareness because a lot of people aren't aware of the technology and how it integrates and how everything works together. IoT basically is a network of objects and they all talk to each other, whether it's electronic sensors, whether it's software, whether um, they collect, they exchange information. Uh, they're controlled remotely. You have home, mobile, business, machine to machine, people to people, people to machine. So what is the Internet of Things? Each, each thing is uniquely identifi identifiable through its embedded computer system. It's able to operate within an infrastructure. They say that approximately 1% of Internet of Things are currently connected. By 2020, we're looking at almost 30 to 50 billion objects being connected and talking to each other. That's huge. Smart IoT implementations. From a city perspective, everything from smart parking to lighting to structural health to waste management, retail, product management, RFID, um, NCF payments, intelligent shopping. From an uh, environmental perspective, being, having the ability to be able to sense whether earthquakes are going to take place, whether there are fires going to take place, early detection, water pollution, water levels in rivers, preventing floods. And of course, we've heard about transportation and cars, and we've all seen Charlie Miller um, hack the car. Um, I actually had the pleasure of meeting him, um, uh, I guess, two years ago now, in 2013, when he actually did that at Countermeasure in Ottawa. And he's been speaking there for several years. So it's actually pretty cool, all of the, the things that, that they bring to light that can actually happen. So the issues of IoT. One of the biggest problems is that vendors don't really understand security. What they want is they want speed to market. They want the products out there. It's the same thing that happened when we had web applications in the internet. Okay, we have to get it out there. We have to be first to market. We have to gain market share. So we have all of these devices. Connectivity for them is more important than security. Um, last spring, I actually went to buy a new washer and dryer because they both died at the same time. So I'm in the store, and my husband and I are looking for a new washing machine. And uh, the salesperson says to us, oh, yes, this one's Wi-Fi enabled. I'm like, why do I want my washing machine Wi-Fi enabled? Well, if you have a problem with it, you can connect it to Wi-Fi, and they can diagnose the problem remotely. It's like, um, that's OK. Tell me how to disconnect this, because I really don't want that to happen. So just think about it from a usage perspective. And I know we think about the data. So, so somebody, somebody knows how many times I'm using my washing machine. But the whole point is they're collecting personal data, personal usage data about, about what you're doing. And then what are they doing with that data? So my concern from a privacy perspective is I don't want my personal information connected. The other thing is unless you ask, we have so many devices, and we saw in the presentations this morning, you put something into another device that is connected to the internet, and now everything is connected to the internet. I finally got Wi-Fi at home because my, I broke down. I actually let my husband put Wi-Fi in, but I still don't li like using Wi-Fi. One of the biggest issues I find with sales forces in organizations is they go to your local Starbucks or your Costa Coffee. I don't know if they have Wi-Fi. I haven't tried it here. But you have public Wi-Fi, and you have information flowing through, generally clear text. Or better yet, I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago, and one of the vendors who I know quite well, and I call him the pineapple man, and he actually sets up a pineapple device and sees how many people will actually connect to that device because they think it's the internet being provided by the conference center. 
So everything that traverses that device, he's now capturing. If it's in clear text, he now has your passwords. At that time, they actually got 12 users' passwords to various accounts. It was kind of interesting. So people don't think about those things. Um, I also lecture at the University of Toronto in cloud computing and freedom of information. So what my goal is to actually have you think about one thing differently leaving this room. I may, not be I may not be discussing anything new that you don't know, but to think about it a little bit differently. And also, vendors don't understand the threats and risks. You know, why would anybody care if their washing machine or toaster is connected to the internet? Wearable devices. But you do have attacks on devices that can damage we saw that in the presentation this morning, where you can have um, either controllers, you can have generators being blown up, um, or using that device and taking control, and now controlling other systems, or taking a group of devices and planning attacks on other things, or just taking those particular devices and now sniffing your environment and collecting more data. So some examples from an industrial perspective is we have smart grids, smart meters, they're all interconnected. We talked about SCADA systems a lot this morning. Uh, there's minimal human intervention with those. It's mainly machine to machine. And SCADA systems. The first SCADA um, network infrastructure that I actually reviewed was in 1999, which was a city. And they were looking at their security posture overall. And this is at the time when internet was coming in, SCADA systems have been designed by engineers who generally did not apply a lot of security controls. If you go back to early computer systems, they also had very little controls in place because they looked at the physical security. In the case of the city, when we analyzed the network infrastructure, they had just put in computers into their public library. So we actually sat at the public library trying to identify what you could see. At that time, they had a completely flat network. You could get to the SCADA systems. Most of the SCADA systems were IP enabled and no passwords. Today, at least, people are designing them within VLANs and more structures in place and more detection. When you look at retail, there's point of sales, there's scanners, there's kiosks. You know, we worry about getting our credit cards stolen. The easiest thing, we, I've reviewed several point of sale systems, and you know, when I actually go and look at using my credit card, I flip the device over to see if there's anything taped to the back of it, collecting my information. We've got RFID. We've got RFID for devices. I was actually in Disney World when they first launched their RFID. And we thought that was so cool that I'm just thinking, oh my god, here we go. I'm tapping for everything. Fast pass this. My room. My charges. Everything. They can triangulate you. From a, a marketing and, and a data collection perspective, it's absolutely incredible because you walk into one of their stores, and they can actually identify how long you have spent at a particular item. They know how much you've charged. They know exactly the traffic patterns within the entire park. And they're using that information to provide a better experience. So it's doing good, but we are also giving up some of our privacy. And because I'm in the era of privacy, I understand RFID. But to the average consumer, do they actually realize that this information is being collected and how it's being used? In-store customer tracking. Before RFID and uh, near-field communications, we had several vendors in Toronto who would actually triangulate you using your Wi-Fi that was turned on onto your phone. So every time I walked into a store, I would turn my Wi-Fi on because they would use that from a triangulation perspective. Also, the thing we find from a retail perspective, you have a lot of old point-of-sale systems. They're left unpatched and they're out of date. Then we move on to the smart, smart home. We have so many systems today that are prevalent from a home security. You've got wearables, you've got your phone, you can lock your doors, open and close them from your cell phone. 
What does that all mean from a security perspective? Privacy, authentication, internet access. It's also consumer education. What does that mean? Do they actually change their passwords? And I hate to say it, that every time I, I walk into one of my daughter's friend's houses, first thing I do is check to see whether or not they have their Wi-Fi, uh, their Wi-Fi is enabled and whether they have a password. I, I hate to say it, but five out of 10 times, the Wi-Fi is fully accessible. So what are they running on their network? I usually don't go that far, because they're friends. <laughs> then we have the internet of things. We've got webcams. Um, I got a really cool little product from a conference. I, I used to put a sticky note on top of my webcam on my laptop, because I always have this fear of it remotely being turned on, and I know the light would shine, but just in case. But I got this really cool little slide thing. So I always have that. Uh, blocking my webcam just in case. But if you Google on the internet, webcams. How many webcams can you Google? You can Google it for ski resorts, you can for vacation resorts, for, all, for traffic, for highways, all kinds of things. There's so much information. They're, they're devices. We've got IoT for home. There's the home automation, accessible via routers, unpatched, not password protected. I mean, when's the last time somebody actually patched their home router? Or their little, little Linksys box, or the little Cisco box? Are they patching it? Or has it been sitting there for the last four years? We also have Wi-Fi leakage and password leakage. Is the Wi-Fi actually encrypted? So with today's security incidents, we have everything from scar uh, card skimmers to espionage, point-of-sales intrusions. I mean, some of the major, major hacks today have been from point-of-sales perspective. And then we also had a Ashley Madison, which originated in Toronto, but stuff happens. You've got physical loss, denial of service, errors, insider misuse, and then everything else. Oh. A world of things. I look at things in the same way I look at all of technology, is that things are designed, created, manufactured, connected by people. Data is collected and stored by people. Everything is run by people, and people are still our weakest link when it comes to technology. It's always easier to integrate security and privacy up front when you're implementing systems, when you're designing, whether it's IoT, whether it's web applications. It's much better to put that as part of your projects rather than trying to fix things later on that's going to cost a lot more time and effort. And then the business users are going to say, why didn't you tell me about this in the first place? The key thing with IoT from a security perspective is looking at the network architecture. If you're implementing these devices, where are you putting them on the network? Are you isolating them? Understanding how they actually work. Understanding the vendor's capabilities, what security components have been actually implemented, designed into their products. Talking with them. If you have a bad gut feel about talking to a vendor regarding their security, even though the product is absolutely spectacular, don't use it. It's not worth the risk. Implementing compensating controls as well. I always look at information security and security of every anything. It's not black, it's not white. We can never achieve the ultimate. It's shades of gray. So making sure that if one thing is, has a weakness, try and compensate that. It may never be achieved to 100%, but it's better than 20, 80% is much better than 50 or 20%. And have monitoring throughout the network environment, understanding what's going in your network, what's traversing that network. Information security and privacy. Information security, it's not just about having passwords, it's also about having governance, about having risk management, and understanding the risks that are involved with your implementation. And it means the internet of things as well. 